Do you remember how we started living at Covenant House? How we became roommates? When you first came to Covenant House, what, how, did, how did you perceive it? I perceived it as like, I don't know if this place is gonna really be for me. It didn't seem that warm at first, but that was me just dealing with my own preconceived notions of it because the term was like, it's a shelter. But dude, like after a month, I realized it became like a second home, like so quick. It's like, I just fell into it. Like even more more, more home than like where I grew up at. It's mm. amazing. What about you? It definitely had that like eerie feeling coming down 40th Street and coming <laughs> off the Port Authority. Yeah. You know, at this stage, I was 19. I, I was institutionalized my whole life. You know, I was group homes, yeah. juvenile detention facilities, program after program. So it was like, all right, here we go again. Yeah, yeah. And boy, was I wrong. Like, I never forget when I ate like a pancake from coming out. It's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, my wife makes pancakes today and I'm just like, yo, man. I remember when I pancakes. first got like a home cooked pancake. Like, and it was, at, it was at the Cove, you know? What I really loved about it is I didn't hear too many, no, you can't, that's mm. not, you should stop, but you shouldn't, right? If anything, it was more, of, oh, that sounds like a good idea. Let me point you in the right direction. So I felt like with here, they gave me a canvas, right? Yeah. And one of the dopest things about the Cove that, you know, we always talk about is the Cove love. Like it, Cove love. Like it was legit, <laughs> like, un, it was unconditional and unlimited. Yeah, yeah. And I had that whole hands-on Gretel mentality, like, who's going to stick me in the oven and cook me up or eat me? <laughs> and the reality is, like, they just, you know, they had a culture of, of, of being positive and righteous. And you see yourself walking through this door, like what would you say? Move with more confidence, more faith, more knowing that whatever you put out, you're going to get back. Mm. That's what I would tell little young Shah, and pull your pants up. <laughs> <laughs> what would you tell little Jason? I always say like Peter Pan, I didn't want to be a lost boy, you know, I wanted a, I wanted a family. You know, Neverland sounds fun and dope, you know, while you're doing it at the moment, but the reality is like, I wanted security, you know, I wanted to feel safe. In a perfect world, if I could snap my fingers and just make all my wishes come true, it would be provide everyone with equal opportunity and resources, right? And just, just to be more aware and considerate of your fellow neighbor or the, your, the, the other person. As a society, we're only as good as the citizens in it, right? So how can we all flourish together if there's some people that, that, that is at the bottom of the chain? Get rid of any type of economical caste system. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's deep, man, like I could go deep with it, but just yeah, I, I would say like, just equal opportunity and resources, bro. You're human. And I think the faster that we break down, you know, our stereotypes, our discriminations, and our differences of opinions, the faster we'll find out the similarities and do the work that's necessary for such terms like homelessness, substance abuse, young person dying doesn't exist anymore. But we all got to do the work, not just us, uh, everyone.